Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. So, not really the time of year where we see too many new releases, new many uh, products hitting the market, but a little sneaky one um, crossed our crossed our path over the last couple of weeks. The new Stealth UDI in the DHY um, over at the the golf at uh, St Andrews last week. Lots of tailor-made boys had uh, had put these in the bag, Mac. Yeah, and I hadn't really heard a lot about um, driving irons the last couple of years. It seems mm -hmm. like it's something that's maybe fallen off a little bit while lofted woods are coming back, but all of a sudden it was like almost every single guy or, or a lot of the guys were putting in driving irons into the bag for that week. Totally. Uh, the, the UDI is, um, is, the, is the stronger of the two. Uh, from a CG perspective, a little bit higher, a little more forward than the, the DHY. And we saw those, there was a sim uh, DHY in, in UDI last, last year, but they never really, they never took off for us. We, we never had massive success with them. And here, I certainly haven't worked with many players who, who kind of brought them in and you know, said that they, they were loving it. So it is an interesting little category. It's quite niche. It's uh, in between the kind of long iron and the, and like you said, the, uh, even even the hybrid, uh, then onto the fairy wood. So it, it's it's just you know I think it's just uh, building out a, a bigger a bigger kind of option base in between the woods and the irons. And it'll be interesting to see whether we really feel like that that needs to happen. Yeah, for sure. Like, what player would you say you? this fits into like someone that would have this in the bag all the time i get it for me i get it that there's certain scenarios where mm -hmm. people would enter the bag but i personally can't see myself putting a driving iron into the bag yeah permanently for every golf course i play i just feel like it's very one-dimensional for me I, very delivery based very yeah. delivery specific um i mean you do so many things with that seven wood i mean you can hit it from 190 yards you can hit it from 250 right. yards uh you, that's your ability to manipulate the face in order to you know, to, to get that. The CG on the seven wood is so far back that it can get extreme height and you have the, the, the skill and talent level where you can turn the face down to get it to go the opposite. Right. You don't have the same, uh, the same flexibility or creativity when For it comes sure. to these clubs. The, the center of gravity, because it is an iron style club, is a little closer to the face. It is always going to be a little bit higher like it is in every iron. So you'll tend to find that the, the flight windows are a little bit more consistent. For most golfers, that's a good thing. Right. When the creativity level and skill level maybe isn't at a level what it is for you. Right. So um, these are these are long iron replacements as we transition towards a hybrid. I mean, obviously the hybrid is designed as a club to make the transition from an iron to a wood easier. Well, this is another transition right. from the the iron to the the hybrid itself. Let's just get into it. We'll talk more as we go. Let's just hit some. We're at the first tee St. Andrews here at the old course, fresh off the, the Open Championship this weekend. Not much, of a, not much of a kind of stressor unless your name's Ian Poulter and you're on the first tee and you've just been booed. Yeah, um, yeah. But really should be the easiest fairway to hit uh, of, the, of the bunch. Really. Yeah. Um, nice. Something like what you've got there, which is uh, the 20-degree the UDI is going to be absolutely perfect for this. So... Um, Let's just nudge a few down there, Mac. Let's see kind of how far you're getting out there with just some normal flighted ones. Sure. Is that close to a straight golf shot? It's pretty middle there. I would say so. 148 ball speed, pretty, pretty toasty. Yeah. Came that was really good. nice. Bit more in that one, just turning it here. Yeah, I just shut the face a little bit. Good, 240 on the fly is going to get to 260. Nice. Yeah, this would be the perfect club to hit off number one. Nope, that was off the toe. Pretty good on the miss, it's going to say. With the construction, one of the things TaylorMade have talked about is trying to make this, again, more forgiving. Yeah, it's, I would say that because normally like, driving irons are like, if I miss hit them, they're, they're ugly. I couldn't have miss hit that much worse. To me, that is exactly the, the value proposition of the UDI is if you like a driving iron, but kind of just don't really have the striking capabilities for it, because they're not easy. No. I mean, often they're just like a, you know, just a stronger lofted P790 or a T200 or something like that. This has a lot more in, in the construction and in the design than those, but it still looks really quite nice. Yeah, the top line, I mean, I'm a big top line guy and this, is something that doesn't look overly bulky. Totally. Like, it doesn't look 
too chunky, so it's pretty nice. Okay, give me give me a couple more, and then we'll uh, we'll start moving the flight around a little bit. Thin. I mean, it's good. I'm catching this all over the face, and they're still okay. So, little post lunch practice session can't beat it oh straight into God. the two iron. <laughs> oh. All right. All right, one more. Then we're going to uh, we're going to hit your comfort zone. We're going to start slinging a few. Beauty, absolute beauty. Look at that. That's the one down number one. I couldn't have caught that one much better. No, no, that's it. Two sixty-six. Handsome. One fifty-two ball speed. I mean, that is really quick, guys. You can see the efficiency there is borderline driver territory, really. Um, when it comes to dynamic loft, 16 degrees hitting one degree down on it, you literally couldn't deliver it any better than that. Neutral path, neutral face. That's that is literally how we would drop the blueprint for an ideal tee shot off number one at St Andrews. Okay, let's go uh, low and, and kind of run in a bit more shape. I mean, we can see as the whole plays there, um, you know, as we, we kind of fly over, lots of room out here on the left, gives you a nice angle, keeps the burn out of play as well. Yeah, so if, obviously if the wind did kick up, um, I would obviously try to hit a little lower one. So okay. this will be a little low draw. So good. So good. Get over there. Cut the flight in half, right? So 118 on the previous one, really, really nice flight. Launch angle at 13.1, very stock. That's exactly where you were in pretty much every, every shot with the standard setup. Um, you know, we talk about how you do it a lot, Mac. You shifted your alignment to the left, you, which shifted your path to the left. Right. Shifting your path to the left is what allowed you to basically shut the face down. If we go, that's face to target is open, but if we go to delivery, face to path, <clears throat> right? So we got the path going 14 six left, face is 4.3 closed, starts at left, moves at right, couldn't draw up any better. Yep. Let's see, let's see the other way. I mean, we, it wouldn't, this shot doesn't call for it, but let's see the versatility of the club. Yeah, so this would be more of coming into a par five and two, maybe downwind or something, and I gotta get it up in the air. Okay. So I'm gonna aim you a little bit more on the, the neutral alignment of the hole. So sure. we, we see that little collection, that little yep. correction of red dots. Let's fade one back into that. Okay. Nicely done. So what we're probably going to see is not a huge drop off in ball speed, probably 146, 147. Yeah, just a round up to yeah. 146. But what we saw was the, the delivered loft go up, which brought the launch and spin up. Okay, let's do one more just like that. Really nice. So carry distance wise, kind of where you would be if you were kind of doing a turnover, a little four iron. Yeah. So it's, it does soften it a little bit. Um, Ball speed right where we saw the previous one, 17 launch, but just dropped the spin a little bit uh, was, was really the biggest thing. So there's your kind of 40 feet of, of height difference. You know, we know you can hit it at 120, uh, actually 60 feet dropping it down to uh, 58 feet if you need to hit the little draw, the low one, or you can flight it as high as 138 and get it coming in as, as 50. So UDI for you is very versatile, versatile enough um, to give you all all the shots. Is that something you would consider going into the bag? Yeah, as I said, I, I haven't used one the last, or even tried one for the last five years or so, yeah. just because I found they weren't really something that worked. But um, at a course like St. Andrews or something firm with um, fast fairways, yep. something that I had some options, I would definitely, just for the capability of keeping it really low without having to think about it that much is something that's important to me. I mean, I don't think it's going to, I mean, you've, you've got a love affair with the seven wood, so I don't think in, in you know, Ontario or, or British Columbia, that it's going to probably kick the seven wood out the bag. But I do think if, if and when we go over to play Lynx golf, seven wood might not be what you want to have. And, and maybe that has, has a little bit more versatility in it for you for the Lynx in terms of the lower flight. Yeah, 100%. I find the, the one thing with my seven wood, and again, I play in conditions that aren't overly windy. Um, mm. So I can get away with higher shots that land yep. soft. I can flight that one down, but I could definitely flight this one easier, a easier. without having to think about it as much. Definitely, definitely. Okay, let's uh, let's hop into the DHY. All right. Um, so the 
I guess we'll call it the, the bigger brother, the yeah. bigger, you know, in dimensions and size and cubic centimeters. We've got the DHY, the driving hybrid. This is a progression from the driving iron, if you want to call the P790 UDI, the driving iron of the tailor-made line. You've got the Stealth UDI, then you've got Stealth uh, DHY, then we're obviously into hybrids after that. So this is the, the last step before we're getting into the little kind of mini wood heads. Don't think it's going to be everyone's cup of tea in terms of the shape. I think, it, you know, the higher handicappers might look at it and go, wow, that, that looks like it's really going to give me some confidence. I feel like I can flight it high. It's very easy to hit. I think we would look at that and go, feels a bit clumsy. Feels like we're not going to quite, uh, you know, be able to work the ball the way we want to. Yeah, I think looking down for me, it's, it's very similar to like the old school driving irons that you'd see a lot of the back. Totally. And for me, I don't like that just because the chunkiness of it is not yeah. something I can look down feel like I can hit a good shot with, but definitely. We'll see. If we flip the club onto its sole, you can actually see that weight is on the sole of the club on this one. It's on the back of the club right. when it comes to the UDI. So that is the, the CG progression, the center gravity progression, uh, about a nine millimeter difference between DHY and UDI. Uh, bringing that CG up is what keeps that ball flight coming out a little bit flatter on the launch. So what you guys should find is if driving irons are something you want to take advantage of, Maybe the shorter shaft is something that you think will help you if you are a little bit on the, the shallower side. Maybe you uh, find that you always hit behind the ball when it comes to you know, your fairway woods. Something like the 17 degree version of the DHY is gonna be really, really good for you. Short shaft length, 40.25 inches, but has that really low CG that you can still launch it nice and high, so a good option. All right, let's, uh, let's see what the ball flight comes out like with this one, some okay. stock ones. Really good. This is two degrees more loft. The spin really shouldn't be that much different because of that CG adjustment. Yeah. Um, but what we should find is a little bit more favorable launch. That was pretty good. Yeah, that actually that felt feel quite good. nice. Yeah, felt great. Very friendly. Definitely more forgiving because yeah. I didn't hit that very well. I felt like I maybe scrubbed it a bit, a little chunky. Mm -hmm. Still got away with it. This is the option, guys, to go for if you're looking to just take away the workability. You don't need it, you don't want it. You're going to play it one way. You're, you're looking to stand up there and hit a nice, high, well-struck long iron. This is, this is the one for you, maybe over the UDI, where it, the, the forgiveness is up over last year's sim UDI, but it's not going to be what the, the stealth uh, DHY is. Yeah. Okay, let's see one more, and then we'll, uh, we'll see how easy it is to manipulate flight on this one. I mean, you've hit those three absolutely perfect. Yeah, those that first and last one were pretty middled. Love that flight. 230, I mean, it's almost it's just rinse and repeat, isn't it? 234, 230, 231, it's going out to 250, standard deviations, tight. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit up in terms of uh, launch and spin, but not, not massive. Pretty good. Yeah, well, I mean... Contact-wise, it felt good. It still doesn't change the fact that I don't love the look of it, but that's just my, my yeah, eyes. Yeah. Some people might love it. Well, at least that's, that's uh, something we can pass forward to the viewers that the sacrifice is not in performance. It's just a, it's a visual preference. Yeah, 100%. Right? It's just your aesthetics, whatever you like to look down on. So we got a low one here? Let's, let's see how, yeah, I mean, this is going to take some to keep this, this guy down. Talk us through how you're doing this. People will want to know how you're hitting this little... So, for me, it's a lot of forward press, hands yeah. forward. People say my ball, your ball position when it goes back. I actually like it a little bit ahead, which is weird. I put it actually ahead of middle normally because it allows me just to exit kind of low and right is my feel. To um, me, it looks like you've got pressure kind of in, into the right side, your lead leg. It looks like... Yeah, yeah, definitely feeling like I'm more into that front side. Yeah. Staying there and then stay on top of it a little bit exactly, more. Exactly, yeah. Really see a difference in your angle of attack. You, you know, by keeping that pressure into the lead leg, it does look like it drives your angle of attack down a little bit. And then it's also like maintaining this angle through yeah. the strike instead of, so actually at address, you'll see that like when I'm hitting a lower stinger one, I'm mm. almost pushing into the turf a little yeah, bit to, yeah. to get that feeling and impact. Because okay. um, that's just what I'm trying to get the club back to that kind of position. Nice. So it can do it. I mean, it can. Yeah, I didn't have any issue with it there. It can sling. I feel like I'll be able to hoist this one really high is yeah. the feeling that I have just looking down at it. So exactly the same in terms of the, the peak height from the UDI. So 
it's not it's not a one-dimensional club by any means in the hands of the right player. Right. It's not like it's going to take a shot away from you. For sure. Okay. Let's uh, let's see what the the moon ball can look like. In fact, let's have some fun with this. Let's go. 220 yards out. We've made it as firm as we can make it, as fast as we can possibly make it. Let's uh, see how easy you can stop this thing. Okay, so my feeling here, open up my stance, choke down just a little bit, feel like I hang behind it. It's kind of my only feeling. The moon ball. Get that. I better land Get soft, because I don't think I could have hit that better. Oh, I mean, look at that. Yeah. That is wild. I, was, I, I just thought that's going to just take a big bounce, but the thing's coming in at 150 feet yeah. in peak height. Uh, you've left yourself a 12 and a half footer, game on. Absolute game on. Launch angles up, spin rate. I up. do find that like looking down at this, just feeling like I can get it up. Totally. That's yeah. the feeling for sure, which I, I like, because I think a lot of people struggle to get the longer irons yeah. up in the air. It can be quite useful. Definitely. Overall thoughts? Thumbs up? Thumbs up for both. Honestly, I think there's a, there's a market for both. Again, visually, I'm a huge visual person, so I'm always into the looks, ne not necessarily the performance, just because mm -hmm. I can't wrap my head around some look of clubs, but yeah. I know there is a lot of people that would really enjoy this one. Um, that one would be one that I would stick in the bag for sure if I was yeah. going to a, a course that was maybe a little windier, a little firmer turf, something I want to get on the ball on the ground and have roll out. So. Totally. I mean, I, and I've done just that. Literally, uh, coming back from... My little trip uh, over in Scotland, I, I really felt like I was missing uh, a club uh, for, for sort of off the tee, flight yeah. it down. I saw uh, these in a bunch of the TaylorMade guys' bag, Rory's bag, a few other guys I saw built up. Uh, haven't built up some, some of those, had to get one. I played a few holes with it on, uh, on Saturday night. Off the tee, off the turf, it's so easy to hit. Yeah, that's, I will say like, Driving irons have always been something because my attack angle isn't necessarily down. It's yeah. quite neutral. I found that it would catch that turf and not give me the forgiveness like the seven wood would. Mm. But with that one, like I found that it, it kind of performed pretty well even on like a little bit of a missed strike. So love it, love it, um, guys. Lots of good uh, loft options. The the DH uh, Y goes down to 17, 19, 22. Uh, the UDI goes 18, 20, 23, I believe. Um, Aldil Ascent shaft in there uh, goes from 70 grams all the way up to 100 gram in the X-Flex. So lots of options. Obviously, the custom program, you, know, you can have it custom fit here with, uh, with companies like ourselves. Tons and tons of options. If you've always struggled with the long irons, but you're not really a hybrid player, and you, know, you can't quite figure it out, this, this, could be, this could be the kind of, uh, you know, the, the, the club or the, the little kind of you know, niche in the market that's, that people have been waiting for. Definitely yeah. felt that way for me. Yeah, I agree with that, 100%. Definitely. Okay, guys, let us know. I mean, they're just released. I think the embargo was lifted on July 5th. They were released into market July 15th, so is it all very, very fresh? Uh, if you've tried it, let us know. We'd love to hear your thoughts on it, um, but definitely go out and give them a try. I think you'll love the flight, feel, performance. Uh, we, we can't really find something to, to kind of pick with these that we don't like. Within the two heads, you've got you know the, the visual, uh, you've got the appeal on, on both. So I think the higher handicappers, it's going to be DHY, isn't it? 100%. I think the yep. lower players and, and you know, is, is leading into the even tour players are going to be uh, UDI. So definitely plenty of options. Cool. Good stuff. Okay, stay tuned for more, guys. We will see you again soon.